Good morning. Welcome to Pastor John's Fireside Chat. It is Friday, August 28th. I hope that you're doing well. The devotion today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 11. It's a pretty familiar story. To back up a little bit, David has been made king of Judah and Israel. He's led the people into uh, victory. He's expanded the territory. And now we come to a sad part of, of David's life. It's recorded in chapter 11. In the spring, at the time when the kings go off to war, David sent Joab, that was the commander of his army, out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? By the way, Uriah was one of David's mighty men, uh, a close confidant to David. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. She had purified herself from her uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. This sets off a whole string of events in David's life that caused not only David a lot of pain, but the nation of Israel a lot of pain. It all started with a walk on a roof. Now, David didn't stumble just because he happened to see Bathsheba bathing. He stumbled because he took the second look. James puts it this way. We're all tempted. The problem is temptation can lure us. It can bait us into a desire that we have to have what we see. And then James says once that desire grabs hold of us, it gives birth to sin, and then when that sin comes to full fruition in our lives, it gives birth to death. And unfortunately, David would experience this process of, of sin luring him, baiting him, seizing him, and then ultimately leading to the death of, of the child, and also the death of other people in his family. Martin Luther once said, it's not a sin to be tempted, we're all tempted. He used this analogy. You can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can't keep them from building a nest in your hair. That's what temptation is like. We're all tempted, and yet we pray in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, and the Lord never does. But there are other things that do. And so we pray that God would spare us that terrible process that James talks about, the temptation that leads to enticement, allurement, getting caught in a trap, then to sin and then to death. And the good news is there is victory for the child of God. Not because we have successfully dealt with temptation, but because Jesus did it for us. There are consequences to sin, and yet Jesus bore the consequences. He bore the punishment. He took away uh, the guilt and the shame so that we could be set free. I hope that we will walk with the Lord in terms of having victory in our lives, knowing that we will be tempted, and yet because he lives in us and his spirit empowers us, we can say no to that temptation and yes to God who really does deliver us from evil. And I pray that that will be your experience in life. But when you stumble, know that there is a God who is a forgiving God who takes our sin upon himself so that we don't have to continue to go down a path of destruction, rather a path of life, because it's a path that Jesus has made for us through his death and resurrection. Have a great day in the Lord.